I would like to propose to you this evening a defense of melancholy. Proposition one, that melancholy is a necessary bodily humor, that there is a certain amount of necessary mourning due to things that grow and pass. Rice, the moon, wheat, childhood, men's hats, tides on a marsh, fingernails. Which leads me to proposition two. If disavowed, the repressive, that melancholy is a necessary bodily humor, that, a certain, that there's a certain amount of necessary mourning due to things that grow and pass. Proposition two. Uh, that melancholy is a disappearing emotion, that there is no time for it in the afternoon out the window to observe the passage of time. We are depressed, but are we melancholy? Are we capable of melancholy? Which leads me to proposition three. If disavowed, the repressed melancholia may lead to other disturbances of the mind. May I here remind you of the godmother who was not invited to Sleeping Beauty's baptism. She took revenge. She took revenge. <laughs> Proposition four, that we must anatomize melancholy, take stock of the causes, stars, a cause, love, a cause, death, a cause, morning, a cause, afternoon, a cause, evening, a cause, the odd times in between, morning, afternoon, and evening, a cause. <laughs> Why are you like an omelet? <laughs> My name is Lorenzo. You would think with a name like Lorenzo that I would feel great passions, sadness, violent anger, unbridled lust. <laughs> My lust is bridled, or not at all. My anger, too, is bridled. And my sadness, there is a cap on it, so it cannot get out. Lorenzo, who plays the harp in the dark, you might think? Lorenzo, who kisses like Mediterranean apples, you might think? But no, it is I, Lorenzo the unfeeling. The unfeeling Lorenzo. I am an orphan. I was found on the doorstep of a candy shop. I was raised on sweets in an unspecified European country. I felt myself to be European. I spoke an unspecified European language. I lived on a street with cobblestones. I wore a tan scarf, but I did not suffer like a European. No, I was happy. One day, my long-lost mother appeared on the doorstep of the candy shop. She wore black gloves and a black veil and a little black skirt. <laughs> I smiled at her. My God, he smiles like an American, she said, like he's smiling for a picture. How white his teeth are and how straight. This was very disconcerting, as you might imagine, for my mother. How could I have given birth to this child? Suffering, she announced, is a brand of citizenship. Then she walked out the door. <laughs> so I moved to Illinois. <laughs> I feel normal here. People tell me, you have such understanding eyes, Lorenzo. I feel like I can deposit my pain right there, like a coin into a hole. I have an office. It is here. Come in. So, sorry. we're about the medication. Yes, I'm sorry about uh-huh, you're sorry? Good. So, how are we feeling today? Well, I don't know how you're feeling, but I'm feeling melancholy. <laughs> and what does that feel like? I would like to die and be reborn as a mushroom. I would like to stay warm and 
slightly damp. Oh, I'll release spores now and then when it suits my mood. Tilly, I would like for you to go on a new medication. It is a very good medication. It will make you feel very nice. Lorenzo, may I call you Lorenzo? Lorenzo is my name? Yes, it is. Lorenzo, cheerful people are the worst kind of people. They make noise when they smile. They have little bells between the cracks of their teeth. When they smile, their teeth ring. I'm going to fold my arms now, Tilly. <laughs> it seems to me, Tilly, that you don't want to get better. It seems to me that you enjoy this melancholy of yours. In fact, you seem proud of it, a little vain even. It is my professional opinion that you feed your melancholy little sweet meats, that you comb it, groom it, keep it as a pet dog. <laughs> Why have you come to see me? The bank made me come. They don't like their employees to be melancholy. But you, you like to be a melancholic employee. Not really. I'd rather be self-employed, open a shop, perfume, or hats. Let me tell you a little story, Tilly. A patient of mine, he thought that if he urinated, he would flood his entire village. <laughs> so he could not urinate. And this was very painful to him. So I tell him a little white lie. I say to him, sir, your entire village is on fire. And suddenly, he feels free to urinate. He feels through this ordinary physical activity that he is saving his village again and again. Huh? <laughs> Are you afraid of putting out the fires? No. Do you find me attractive? Is that the problem? No, I don't think so. <laughs> the bank, if you transfer money from one account to the other, I don't do that. It is normal to fall in love with me. It is okay. I'm not in love with you. Okay, okay. <laughs> Lorenzo, why do you try to make people happy? Because I myself am happy. Happiness is contagious. It's like a disease. Do you never long to be sad? No. Do you never want to cry? No. Is there anything else? Let's put our hands in the room. See how this rain sticks to the flowers? There's a word for Japanese in Japanese for being sad in the springtime. A whole word just for being sad about how beautiful the flowers are and how soon they're going to die. I don't remember the word. You're a very beautiful woman. Oh no. Tilly, my mother abandoned me in a sweet shop. Why are you telling me this? Because the heavens have cracked open. I suddenly want to tell you everything. I think I love you, Tilly. They say that's what happens when you fall in love. You want to tell people things. You especially want to tell them sad things. He did sad things from the past. Something like, I was abandoned in a sweet shop in a long fussy bar in European country. I'm so sorry. You don't be sorry. I want to tell you all these sad things. <laughs> and then you will know me better than other people know me. And that way, we will serve one another. Because we made a reservation, like at a restaurant, like at the Grand Hotel. And we made this reservation with a certain foreign currency made of secret sad information we told each other in private rooms. <laughs> oh, I feel a weight on my chest. What have you done to me, Tilly? Why? Lorenzo, I'm so sorry this happens sometimes to me. I should have warned you. When I gave up physics, I gave up accounting. I found myself sitting in public places. I found myself sitting in public places. Libraries, restaurants, movie theaters. I pretended that I was accountable to the other people in the room. Now furthermore, they were accountable to me. I, I lost, lost my, my watch. watch. I, I didn't, didn't buy a new one. one. I enjoyed asking strangers, what, what time, time is it? And they always, always answered, answered, two o'clock. Thank, Thank you, I said. said. This could, could be repeated, repeated over and over, over again. again. What, what time, time is it? it? Eleven o'clock. Thank you. You're welcome. So, so reassuring, reassuring to experience the social contract again and again. again. And, and so, so, I became a tailor. I opened a beauty salon. Even, Even when, when I was a child, I liked it when strangers touched me with clinical purpose, people I was not related to, comforting, 
my that hair, my pants, wet, soft against my, my shoulder. A stranger who cared, or seemed, or seemed to care, about my physical well-being. Not creepy, understand. Nothing untoward or perverse, but, but gentle. gentle. I, I could have been, been a prostitute and gotten the same effect. <laughs> or a doctor, maybe. But, but no. The touch, the touch feel, feel offhand. offhand. Someone grazes your shoulder while they're doing something else. Something, something peaceful. peaceful. No, no big deal. deal. <laughs> Time slows down when you're having pants and hair. <laughs> Plus, I, I like fabric. Hair. I've, I've always, always liked hair. fabric. How, how it looks, looks, how it smells, how it hangs, how a good suit haircut can improve an ugly duckling's appearance and make them feel confident and unafraid. <laughs> Why are you like an um? What? I wanted to ask you. You wanted to ask me? Why are you like an um? Did you ask me this before? Yes, three seconds ago. No, I mean, <laughs> like, another time further back, I'm having a sensation of deja vu. Oh, I hate deja vu. Do you want to sit down? No, thank you. But, um, could you tell me why I'm like an almond? You're like an almond because you're dry like bark. A hungry one that doesn't shove her mouth with almonds, it doesn't satisfy a person to eat one and your mouth goes dry. I know like a moment right before you want to kiss someone. Have we met somewhere before? <laughs> no. I work in the bank. Oh. You come in, you ask for $40, I give you two tens and a 20. That sounds familiar. Yes, when I put the money in your hands, you're always so distracted. When you go, I watch you leave. You always turn left. You do. I do turn left. <laughs> <laughs> so then I'm not mistaken, it's you we're discussing. Yes, I think it's me that we're discussing. Why do you always deposit your money in person? You could deposit it out front in a machine. Did you know that? Yes, I'm aware of that. So then what? I don't know. It's just my bubble is done. I don't use the machine either. You don't? No, I don't. Uh... <laughs> Are you afraid of me? No. I don't think so. Ah! Sorry. <laughs> Do you think I want to crack you open with a mallet and look inside of you? No. <laughs> because that's exactly what I'd like to do. <laughs> Look, I'm just a tailor. I'm, I'm not in a violent sense. It's just I have this Persian friend, and he said that American men only have two emotions, happy and mad. I'm not like that. I know. You get sad just by looking at the way the light comes through the window in the afternoon, maybe. I do. You do? I do. <laughs> What's wrong? Well, it's just that people are always coming and going. I wish they would just stay in one place, like at the bank. Customers leave. Well, I stay. I stay there all day, and I think that they think that I just disappear until the next transaction. Well, I don't. I stay. And in the mind of God, everything happens perpetually. He keeps us alive just by thinking about us. Well, that's kind of like me. I think about my customers all the time. I'm so sorry. No, you're not. I am, really. I, um, well, you, you seem a little sad. Are you sad? Sometimes. I, I don't mind. I, I kind of like that, actually. There's a word in Portuguese. It means melancholy, but not exactly. It means longing for someone who's far away. I know that word. You do? What is it? I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even know my name. What's your name? Tilly. Yes, me too. I don't think that would be appropriate. You're having my trousers. <laughs> that would be highly inappropriate. So, you kissed this friend while he was having your trousers? Yes. Did he kiss like an American? Were his lips hard? Did he move his tongue around like a tractor turning over the yard? Did you hear music playing inside your head when you kissed him? No. So it's nothing serious. Well, I'm for this. I am suffering. Look into my eyes. Can you see the suffering? Ever since I met you, there has been no morning and no evening. There is only one long afternoon. The afternoon is shaped like an almond. 
Every day I think I will step into the almond, like a boat, and ride it into evening. But I lie down in the almond boat, and it is always still afternoon. I look up, and there is no piazza. There are no old men to play cards with who know my family name. I understand, Lorenzo. You do? Yes, and I'll play cards with you. Is that American for, I will be your bride? <laughs> I will play cards with you and look out the window with you, but then I have to go get my hair cut. Can they help your hair? Just a little bit. No. Yes. No. Yes. Why? Because I need a trim. But your hair, it is the sad song of a lark. Oh, come on, so it's just a trim. We'll play cards. You're an old man, I'm an old man. We live in Italy. We drink out of small cups. We have time to look out over the mountains and reflect about the past. You will think about your mother, I will think about mine, but we will say nothing, we will just play cards, okay? Will you save me your hair from your haircut? Sure. Can I touch your hair before you go? My whole being were just one big nose to smell you always be. <laughs> 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 swept up off the floors and a woman has gone home for the night. And there are plastic vestments on the chairs to catch all the useless things that have fallen. I never thought of it like that. Oh, and there's this neon sign in the window that's earnest about beautification. You think my sign's earnest? Oh, in a good way. Your hair is incredibly healthy. Oh, I don't use conditioner and I don't blow dry it. That's good. <laughs> you should keep that up. <laughs> Do women tell you lots of secrets when you cut their hair? Stories you wouldn't imagine. Oh, I thought so. Like what? What's <laughs> out? When I walk past at night, I think of all the stories women have told during the day. Stories about holding court and green light. Stories with tiaras and green wands. Oh, I'm sorry. Sometimes I get wound up and I tell people what I'm thinking. So what do you do? I work at the bank. Really? Yes, why? You don't seem like you'd work at a bank. What are you saying about banks? No, I just or meant... what are you saying about me? No, well, I... Well, you must have meant something by it. Really, I didn't. Is anything wrong? No, I'm fine. Well, I'm finished. Do you want to see? Oh, no. What's wrong? Well, I'd hate for it to be over. Well, I could comb it for five more minutes. <laughs> that would be heaven. Okay. <laughs> Were you always a hairdresser? No, a physicist. Really? All those angles? Yes. And then what? <laughs> I gave it up. Are you happier now? Yes. I think so. That's good. Do you ever feel melancholy in the afternoon sweeping up all the hair that's no longer on anyone's head? Sometimes. I feel like I can smell the ocean. I feel like I can smell the ocean too. Right now. Right now. Wow. What about that? All the way from Illinois. I can smell seaweed. I can smell salt. Mm. Are you from the ocean? Well, I used to live by the ocean. Oh, so you're far from home. You're in exile. Well, I moved from New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> the wind's different by the ocean, isn't it? Yes, I think so. Do you have collected all the lost hair? No. What would I use it for? Oh, I don't know. Just so it wouldn't be alone. So it would be with all the other lost hair. Do you mind if I keep my hair? No. That's fine. <laughs> I love this time of afternoon. Me too. Me too. Me too. Me too. Oh! What? I have a nurse at home. She wouldn't like me to say me two, three times in a row. <laughs> oh, she takes care of you? Kind of. I live with her. There's a word in Russian. <laughs> it means melancholy, but not exactly. It means to love someone, but also to pity them. 
You really do have beautiful hair. <laughs> of love, melancholy, <laughs> temperature, idleness, diet, beautifully face, beautifully torso, beautifully eyes and other parts. Of all the causes, the remotest of stars. Oh, Tilly, why? You're asking me what she's like. Yes. And it's not going to make you feel funny if I tell you? I feel funny already. Well, what is it you want to know? The usual things. It's not going to make you feel bad? No. Well, she's delicate. She could spend an entire afternoon filling a little bowl with water and putting little yellow flowers in it. So, she's a hard worker. <laughs> well, she's tired. But in this seductive I don't understand. She makes her unhappiness into this sexy thing. She throws herself onto couches. You wanted to take care of her? Yes, I did. She seemed spontaneous. Yes. We were the name to me. Yes! Oh. I think I didn't want to upset you. I'm not upset. I'd like to meet her. I don't know if that's such a good idea. We'll have tea. It'll be civilized. Not a jealous person, Francis. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> I took Tilly home to my apartment. I took Frank home to his apartment. I he said, said you were like a painting. What painting? I don't know. The one where a woman looks sad and beautiful. Oh, like this? Uh, <laughs> 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 I mean, it goes over your shoulder, a little to the left, with, with your chin down, and, and your eyes looking up. Your, your eyes should look hopeful while your chin looks sad. One thing goes up, one thing goes down. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes, I wish I could paint you. Why don't you? I can't paint. <laughs> Then we made love <laughs> under the covers, the whole thing. The room was dark. The sheets were damp. It was everything I'd hoped for. And then afterwards, I, I held, held her in my arms. arms. It, it was, was like, like a movie, an, an aerial, aerial shot. Her head on my chest. His head on my chest. Then <laughs> she gazed up at me. I said, play the seasick music. I'm in love. Wait, don't say that. I, I'm scared. She said, what are you scared of? I asked. Have you ever seen what sadness looks like on a person? After they take off their gray shoes and their gray gloves, it looks different, not like a movie. When people are sad in private, they wear sweatpants, not pearls. You wouldn't like it. It's not possible, Tilly. I love you. We breathed together, together in the dark for, for a long time. time. Then, then she began, began to cry. cry. She was beautiful when she cried. I'm beautiful when I cry. <laughs> I got in trouble with the policeman when I cry. Oh, Tilly. Oh, Frank. Oh, Tilly. Oh, Frank. Oh, God. God has nothing to do with us. <laughs> oh, Tilly. Frank. Oh, Tilly. Oh, Frank. Oh, Tilly. Wait, don't say my name again. What? Don't say my name again, I think. That didn't say it. Yes, but now it's wrong. I don't understand. Well, the first three times you said my name, it was right, and the fourth time, questionable. The fifth time, wrong, that Tilly was not me. I've, I've, been, I've been saying your name wrong. No, you forgot <laughs> my name wrong. You experienced a person who wasn't me, and then you spoke that person's name. I see. Here, try again. <laughs> Tilly. No. Tilly. Closer. Let's stop, Frank. Religious people don't address God directly in their prayers. They have a nickname for him so that they don't get it wrong. And that's why when you love someone, you don't call them by their proper name. You call them honey or spooky or schlumpy or little spoon. Do you understand me? Why are you so mean to me, Tilly? I don't know. Am I mean to you? I love you. Yes, here. 
tell me something sad about your past. It'll make us feel better. It'll make us feel like we know each other. Okay. <laughs> I told Tilly something sad about my past. Not the saddest thing, but fairly sad. I thought I understood him. We, we cried, cried at, at the, the same, same time. time. She was, I wrung out her tears until she fell asleep. I, I wrung out her tears into a little vial. I offered her my handkerchief. First, I offered her my handkerchief. You're the only man I know who still carries a handkerchief. I love you. <laughs> Tilly thought for three hours about the lost art of the handkerchief until she fell asleep. I watched her sleep. A strange desire came over me to save her tears forever. I wrung out the handkerchief into a little glass vial, and I watched her sleep all night. <laughs> Therapy. Well, I go to therapy and my therapist falls in love with me. I have to be careful. 
How so? I'm not particularly smart, and I'm not particularly beautiful, but I suffer so well and so often that when people see me cry, they see a river they haven't swum in, a river in a foreign country, so they take off their trousers and they jump in and they take pictures with waterproof cameras. They get out and they dry themselves in the sun and they're all dry, but I'm still wet. Maybe my suffering isn't from this time. Maybe it's from a time when suffering was sexy, when the afternoon and the pavements were full of rain. Maybe my tears aren't from this century. Maybe I inherited them from old well Wait, am I being weird? No. <laughs> I'm sorry, do you mind if I lie down on your couch? I'm feeling sort of... Please do. <laughs> 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 Would you both smile for a moment? How oh, you both have such beautiful smiles. Have you had dental work? Yes. No. They don't have dental work in England, do they? No, they don't. I like bad teeth so that you look old when you're supposed to. Yes. Could you play some music? What would you like to hear? Oh, anything. <laughs> Happiness is buck-toothed, 
Happiness is bleeding. Happiness wears gold cap teeth. I was abandoned at the candy shop. <laughs> Happy! 
Oh, you no. must admit there's some, there's something like a shock. Oh, I'm so sorry. Happy? Happy. No trace. Every drop gone. No trace. I'm in love again, but not with Frank. With a woman who writes obituaries. I met her at the bank. She was withdrawing all of her money. Carpe diem, she said. That's right, I said. She said, you seem to enjoy your work. And I said, I do. <laughs> she said, I like that. We wake up every morning at 6 a.m. and go biking before she finds out who's dead. She writes the most beautiful obituaries. They're not like the normal ones. They've got flair. My God, I am so happy. We can do a blood test. I don't need a blood test. I'm happy. Let's look out the window. Look at that old woman walking home from the store by herself. For whom is she carrying that gallon of milk? Where is her husband? It will be too much milk for her. <laughs> she will be thinking of her husband who is dead from the war. <laughs> How much of that milk will sit unused in the afternoon while she drinks her solitary cup of tea? That old woman is so sad and beautiful. She makes me happy. Oh, don't do this to me. <laughs> <laughs>
Have you ever been so melancholy that you wanted to fit into the palm of your beloved's hand and lie there for fortnights or decades or the length of time in between stars in complete silence? I put her tears in a little vial. Uh, I collected them. Like the Romans. This vial is all I have left of her. Is that weird? Yes, that is weird. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like some candy? It's good. No, thank you. But you said the Romans did it? Forget the Romans. Go on. I never loved someone so much in my life. Now she's gone. And I wish I were dead. What are you laughing about? Perhaps I am laughing because I too have felt the weight of the field, right? Oh. You seem depressed. Maybe a little. It's my medical opinion that you should go on medication. It is a very good medication. It will make you feel very nice. I'm sad because I fall out of love. I'm not sad like I want to take medication. Frank, maybe you should have a little stay in the hospital. I don't want to stay in a hospital. You know, I think I'll go to another country. In French movies, people die of love. They die of love. Hey, Frank. <laughs> Poor Frank. Why don't you continue with your story? Well, okay. <laughs> One day, all at once, with no explanation. She was happy, <laughs> cheerful even. It was, it was like a violent accident, a car wreck. We, we suddenly had nothing in common. I felt so far away from her. Her face got red when she was happy, like a, like a sweaty cow. And, and her voice got louder, and her eyes got glazed over, like a, like, like a sweaty cow. Yes, <laughs> and how did that make you feel? Well, something came home from her birthday Tilly? party. That's the woman's name, Tilly. I was at Tilly's birthday party, not you. You know Tilly? Do I know Tilly? Do I know Tilly? That's ridiculous, <laughs> I'm paying you. Give me that vial of tears. No. Give me those tears! No, I collected them! <laughs> So slow. 
Life used to be so sweet. Life used to be banisters and rain-drenched cobbled streets. Do 
Do you think that there are others? Like Francis? What's that? A letter? Oh, read it. <laughs> <laughs> if you are experiencing any form of melancholy, stay in your home. I repeat, stay in your home. Occupy your mind, occupy your hands. Do not look out the window in the afternoon, dreaming of the past or far off things or dead people or the sea. People who are experiencing melancholy have been turning into almonds on the streets. Do not eat these almonds. Do not step on these almonds. If you do find one or a family member becomes an almond, you put them in a Ziploc bag and deposit it in the nearest mailbox. Who's it from? Anonymous. <laughs> Ah, it is an epidemic! These streets are littered, littered with almonds! I step on one, I step on two on my way here! I crush them under my shoes, see? Ah! <laughs> Well, it should be. I know where Tilly goes. Okay, then. 
We'll put Francis in the center of the circle. Ha, 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 ha. 